Welcome back, folks, to another Game Hoarder production. We have just begun. Seven Days a Skeptic. The final in the series of the show mythology. The scout ship Mephistopheles, first built 2328, was relaunched yesterday after an extensive upgrades. She will be assigned to the map in uncharted regions of the Caucasus Galaxy. She's under the command of Captain Barry Shahal, hero of the Maul's riots, and is to be Captain Shahal's last posting before his retirement. Spokesman for the Earth Federation Navy dismissed claims that despite several upgrades, the Mephistopheles is outfitted with obsolete technology. He is quoted as saying, If it is good enough in the 23rd century, it's good enough today. The scout ship, Mrs. Stuffalice. Earth date, 27 July. Far into the future. All systems running normally. Then we are seeing Cross Hall presence. Seven days of skeptic. Sometimes I get the feeling that I don't belong here. I mean, I'm here on the ship, surrounded by all these veterans. And I'm terrified that someone will notice me and say I'm on the wrong ship. I have to keep this weird dream that I'm in a room full of people with green skin. And they just watch me, wondering, what am I doing here? And then one of the green peoples turns around. He's my father. Does that distress you? Not really. Although I do feel kind of embarrassed. What do you think, John? What do I think? William, I think you're just letting things get on top of you. I mean, ship's physician on the exploratory scout ship, that's pretty heavy first posting. No one expects you to do anything other than your job. Ugh. I suppose you're right. I'm a counselor. I'm always right. <laughs> well, sorry to have barged in on you like that. Oh, don't worry. That's what I'm here for. I better get back to sick bay. Thanks, John. So here we are, folks. Another Ben Yahtzee adventure. The final seven days of skeptic after five days of stranger, the Trilby notes, six days of sacrifice, and now here we are with the grand finales of the Shizou mythology. And if you've been following along, you're probably wondering what's gonna happen. My diploma in human psychology and my license to practice in an enclosed spaceship environment. I brought that with me from the storehouse I lived in while I was at college. It's a bit too small for people to lie down on, but it's the thought that counts. My desk containing all the files on the crew and their mental well-being. Groovy. This is a shipwide announcement. All personnel report to conference room on the ops deck. By order of Captain Shahal. Oh, hey, John! Adam, what's that all about? Beats me! Maybe someone died!
Right then, boys and girls, Serena, I have a little announcement to make of something we think you should know about. I thought you were already married. Yeah, yes, very witty. Fact is, the scanners have picked up something floating in open space. Something manufactured. Serena. Thank you, Captain. If I could draw your attention to the tabletop. The object is constructed of a metallic alloy and seems to be rectangular in shape. Oh, wow. First contact. Let's not get too excited. It's more likely to be a human artifact left to the drift for a long time. What else do we know about it? It seems to be kind of a container. The right sort of size to be cryonic escape pod. Sensors don't show any life signs inside of it, though. Then you inform our command. Yes, sir. They recommend we drop a beacon and leave it for a fully equipped research vessel. Just a recommendation, not a direct order. Yes, sir, but... Adam, use the grappling call to bring it in the cargo bay. I'll be in range for the next few hours. Right, old chief. Okay, everyone else, go back to what they were doing. We'll let you know if we need any of you for anything. Black man with the redneck accent. Just a minute, John. What do you think of this? I guess I won't know what I think until it's been brought in. Yeah, yeah, quite. You know, I'm going to need you there when we're examining it. No, I didn't know that. Come on, John. It's the basic procedure. You should know this. This is potentially a first contact scenario. Regulations say qualified psychologists must be on hand for first contact scenarios. Okay, sure, but I'm not sure what use I'll be. You really need to stop depreciating yourself. Adam should be bringing it into the room soon. Stop by my quarters for a chat if you like. Help pass time. All right, we have the different floors of the ship, observation, operations, communal, residential, engineering. And we're at the top on number two. Let's go top to Barry. Who hey, is it? John Barry. Oh, John, do come in. What's on your mind? I'm concerned about one of the crew. Huh? Who? Angela doesn't have any sense of fun at all. She was educated at the Ganymede University of Science. They like to teach people that logic is the only way of life. That's why I need a first mate, really. Sometimes a logical viewpoint is what you need the most. William seems to think he's out of his depth. Hell, didn't we all on our first posting? I remember mine, helmsman on the EFC Kyle, California. I was expecting the captain to turn around and bite my face off every minute of the day. William be all right soon enough. Adam acts so fastidious at times. Hey, someone has to. Spaceship is in closed environment and sometimes tempers get a little strained. Every crew needs someone like him to lighten the mood. And he's a fine engineer, too. You're his bunk mate. You know him better than me. I guess. I wonder what they think of me. The ship's counselor is paranoid? Physician heal thyself. Seriously, they must think you're doing your job, right? They wouldn't keep talking to you if you weren't. Thanks. Never mind. Oh, okay. Anything else you want to discuss with me? 
How are you feeling? Hell, I'm always content. You know that. You're retiring after this post, right? God, don't remind me. High command had done so constantly over the last few months. I could have wished for a slightly more memorable final mission. Let's just see what the future holds. What do you think the object will be? I don't want to make any assumptions yet. Personally, I hope it'll be an alien artifact. But, really, I'm expecting it not to be. Pessimism is a sensible attitude. That way you can't get disappointed. <laughs> Hell yeah! Well, I should get back to work. Drop in any time you want to talk. It's not like I got shit else to do. I suppose I should take another look through the personnel files in case this is a first contact scenario. Attention, Dr. Somerset. Dr. Somerset, please report to the Gargo Bay immediately. Then again, possibly not. And we are Mr. Somerset that we saw in the last video. The last game, I should say. Good doctor's grace us with his presence. Let's get this show on the road. What is it? It's a box. It's a metal box. Come on, let's do this by the book. Angela. Thank you, Captain. Examination of unidentified object, 27th of July, 2385. Object is rectangular, approximately 2.5 by 4 by 4, 4 yards. Initial scans indicate it's been constructed from a combination of lead and base metals. Initial scans also show no radioactivity, biological waste, or other hazardous materials. Are the automatic hazard neutralizers activated? Yep, ears! Then I am now opening the object. Wait! There's a plaque on the side of the box. Really? What's the sign? He lies, John Defoe, finally at rest. Do not disturb his sleep. Do not disturb his sleep. Then there's a date and a little drawing of a hat. A wet? I think it might be some kind of signature. Who the hell signs their name with a hat? What do you think, Angela? These words seem to indicate human remains. Ethically disturbing, human remains is frowned upon. We should take it to a better equipped space station and leave it for the researchers there. Hmm. I agree. This isn't something we should be concerning ourselves with. I'll patch a message to High Command. Explain the situation. Gee. So much for first contact, eh, John? I'm just a little confused as to how human remains ended up floating around the Carcass Galaxy. Carcass. A lot of people were burned in space around the beginning of the 21st century, dude. I think it was a sort of trendy for a while. Even so, to have gotten as far as this galaxy just after a few centuries. <laughs> Look, don't worry about it, alright? Now, I don't know about you, but I'm turning in for the night. After I smoke a bow, you know, you see what I'm saying, dude? Gonna get high, so high. Monday.
Huh? What the fuck? God, what a nightmare. I can't even remember what was so scary about it. Bunch of bullshit. That's odd. I can't hear the engines running. I probably should save my game in case I get fucking murdered. Plastic, of course. No real plants survive long in this stale atmosphere. The elevator doesn't appear to be working. The dispenser is currently set for breakfast. What should I have? I'll get the continental. Yum, yum. I hate the butter they serve with these things, so I won't eat it. But I'll fucking stick it in my pocket so it can melt and ruin my pants. Going in the maintenance shaft to see what's wrong with the elevator. Oh, well, if it makes you feel any better, dude. Okay, I've smeared butter around the components of the object. It's some kind of old-fashioned bladed weapon. Are these blood stains? It's a machete. Cue horror music. Dr. Somerset, is the lift operational again? After some persuasion. What's going on? The captain is appeared to have gone missing. What? Nobody has seen him since yesterday evening. We were attempting to scan the ship interior when the power went down. The escape pods are still here, so you must be on board somewhere. Weird thing is I can't isolate the cause of the power outage. I tried to send a communication to High Command, but for some reason it won't send. Since you're here, could you start searching the ship? See if you can find Adam, so he can get the engines back on. He's sulking in the canteen. He's acting odd, like he doesn't care about what's going on. Confidentially, I think he's afraid of something. Well, that's your territory, not mine. Keep in touch. Sure.
Adam. John. What's up, dude? Got a doobie? The communicators aren't working. Any idea what could cause that? Well, if it's not because of the power outage, then it'll be a foreign object lodged in the communication pylons on top of the ship. It's usually an asteroid or something. Can you repair it? Well, this is all speculation, of course. Why don't you go outside and take a look at it for me? I'll give you the airlock pass. How are you feeling? You know me, John. High as a kite. Spring chicken, glasses half full, happy little bunny and all that. Adam. Stop fussing, all right? You're not my mom. Why don't you come too? Well, if it turns out to be nothing, then we'll have wasted both our times, dude. I'm about to blaze up. Not to mention the oxygen tank and the EV EVA suits. Are you afraid of something, Adam? I beg your pardon? Never mind. I'll see you later, puss. Later, dude. That's the closet where the Eva suits are kept. It doesn't look too safe out here. I better observe all safety precautions. Okay, I'm safely attached to the rail. I'm gonna clip myself from the rail. Lieutenant Gickenny, come in, please. Actually, this is John Serena. Dr. Somerset, you can't go on, Eva. You're a counselor. Relax, I took standard EVA training with everyone else. Well, where's Lieutenant Gilkenny? Adam doesn't want to move from the canteen. Something seems to have spooked him. This is most irregular. I'm just going to check out the radio mask and come right back, okay? Well, please be careful. Oh shit, that don't look good. Dr. Somerset, our scans show that you're on top of the ship now. Can you see what's clogging the radio mast? Dr. Somerset? Dr. Somerset, respond please. I'm here. <laughs> 